It's very brightly colored and it's very loud. And it's fun for a while. We want to be free to, to do what we, we want to do. We're Muhammad Ali and Sonny Barger, the president of Hells Angels. This is 109.5. Are they called supports? Yeah. Frames work. Framework. Framework. Yeah. Put in the frame. Well, it's just a stud ball, isn't it? Basically. Let's go in. <laughs> 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 Your mental. Yeah. Click on the link. Click it. Is it a link? We can't do links. We haven't got enough followers. Yeah. Just go to the course, pimpyourrental.com. Yeah. The thing is, though, I've been thinking about this all week because we haven't had it planned. And in my mind, I was thinking, if I was on the Graham Norton show, which drink would I drink? <laughs> because they've always got a drink, haven't they? Yeah, they always got. A drink. Yeah. yeah. When I get to Graham Norton, I'll have a I mean, I feel feel somewhat. I mean, the fact you're comparing me to Graham Norton, I've got to thank you for that because <laughs> I'm a, a long way from Graham Norton. But anyway. Welcome to the podcast. So, okay. Okay. of course. Yeah, thank you. Well, um, let's just deal with the elephant in the room. Obviously, we are brother and sister. Otherwise, because there'll be some familiarity during the chat. But uh, yeah, it's cool to have family on, which I've had on before. So, um, but we're here to talk about pimp your rental. I got it yeah. right, yeah, because I was saying it wrong yesterday. So, I, maybe the best way is, you know. Look, It'd be good to just do you want you want to give us a brief on it and then and then we'll we'll kind of get into be good to understand what it's about um, no. and then I'll ask a few more questions. Do you want to know about the course, which is right now, or, or why we thought of this idea in the first place? We'll start with the course, three. Yeah, course. yeah, both really. So go for it. Whatever you, yeah. Do you want to say? Or no, I... it's your little baby. So pimp your rental. Well, it's a course. It's an online course. It's not available yet, but it is launching on the tenth of December, and it's 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 basically a, a course that's designed to help renters and homeowners on a budget reimagine their space how to make their space beautiful that's the pimping bit um it's not i was i was thinking about it this morning it's not specifically diy even though a lot of what rang and i do is, is diy it's more like a look inside our minds if that makes sense like you're not going to get our course and learn how to tape something to paint it or how to build even, a cabinet how <laughs> How to build a cabinet. How to build a wardrobe or nothing like no, that. It's no. nothing like that. No. no. But it's more like inside the mind of Emily and Rang, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Well, you don't want to go too far in mind. No. What's in your mind? Oh, lots. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it ain't been no, not, right. No. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just how to get Rang things and just... Uh, yeah. Well, you know... How to use stuff and... I mean, let's be honest, I'm writing most of the calls, aren't I? Yeah. What are you doing? Just smiling. <laughs> So you guys are a double act in terms of DIY. You're a DIY double act. Is that would I? Is that a good description? Sounds a bit vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rang does most of the DIY. I'm the brains, I reckon. Huh? I mean, look, I'm I'm a stylist, yes. am I, and a designer. So yeah. a lot of the ideas come from what I've learned as a stylist and a designer in the last fifteen years. So it'll be things like people that can't afford an interior designer. They can sort of I give them ideas about the way to look at a, a project. Rather than telling them exactly how to do it, right? Is that right? This is I'm yeah. just right, easily, aren't I? Yeah, and I'm just saying it how easy it can be. Yeah. To put two bits of wood together and stuff. It's just like a couple that. of screws, isn't it? Just a couple of screws. That's, that they use it all the time. It's always just a couple of screws. Yeah, build a house, two screws. That's all you need. Yeah, but we are doing so inside the course. There are sort of two or three real time makeovers that Rang and I are doing together. Normally, Rang does all the DIY. For some reason, I've started to pick up a bit of a paintbrush and tool, haven't I? And I'm, I'm yeah. doing it a bit as well now. Yeah, my job gone. Yeah, so what are you doing now? Nothing, I'm giving it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what makes a difference? I mean, a lot of people think about DIY. It's a creative thing. You're taking a, you're taking a space and turning it into a new space. I mean, what, what's different about how you guys are approaching it versus just, you know, I've got a house, I'm going to go and make over the kitchen or, you know, are there, are there differences in what you're doing or is it, yeah. is it? trying to make fun of it we do try to make fun of it i think the difference is i mean but because the course is aimed at renters and homeowners on a budget a lot of the education in this course is also to show renters what they can do and to teach people to be bold and to be brave to do things loads of people i meet all the time 
will say, well, I'm renting, so I'm not going to buy a sofa. Or, I'm renting, so I'm not going to paint the wall. Even people that own will say, well, I'm not going to buy any art yet because I haven't really decided how to do this room. Nobody really lives in the moment. Everybody plans for the future. And it's about teaching people that you can actually have a really nice house right now, even if you've only got 200 quid to spend on the whole thing, or even if you don't own it. That's the difference. Cool. And have you got some good examples of, this, this might sound like a dumb question, actually, but obviously you guys are in lockdown. Like, what's going on in England with, like, jobs like this now? Can you, is there a problem with people going and having people around their house, like builders around? And, or, or is that all still cool? It's just yeah, there's lockdown build, and then there's work. This is builder can't work from home. We're allowed into other people's homes at the moment. So, okay. Um, so, yeah, we're not totally locked out. Look, as long as you turn up with a tool bag, you're allowed in. You know what I mean? So, there's so you, if you want a party, you just grab a couple of tool bags, Absolutely. invite people yeah. around, and okay. Yeah. There's no building frame, Yeah. Yeah. You just got to come in your overalls. Yeah, none of it stopped. It's actually busier than ever, isn't it? Yeah, it Everybody's has been busy. Everybody's so yeah. busy. It's, I've, I've, I've got a feeling it's because a lot of people are, have been at home and they're looking at their four walls constantly for the last eight months. And yeah. people need to change what they think. Yeah. DIY stores are absolutely rammed at the moment with people on the weekends and whenever you can get near one there's queues for it so a lot but I, I got a feeling it's a lot of people who's been locked in their house yeah it's true and they're looking at four dreary walls and thinking what can I'm I do change it. And oh, then I need to change I need so. to register for the provincial rental course is what they're thinking that's what they're thinking yeah they can take my 99 pounds yeah so the course so, so the course is going to give you techniques on how to look at a space and turn it into a new space that's more in your vision exactly. and based on a little bit of Rang and M attitude. Is that kind of... Yeah, it's definitely... Yes. Yeah. I mean, look, it's I've, a lot of the stuff is, is, like I said, things that I've learned over the last 15 years as a stylist and a designer. But what's interesting about the Rang element is we have known each other for a really long time, but I've only just started doing this together for the last three years. So all his experience has come into this as well as a plumber, builder, plaster, tiler, DIY man. <laughs> just things I've picked along, along the way. Yeah. So, yeah. So if I can pick it up and do it. Anyone can. Any, well, most people. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? so, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. Yeah. So, well, you're just giving it a go. So I am giving it a go. So anybody can do it. So, so you guys got any good examples of, of uh, and, you know, story examples of, of places you've kind of renoed or worked on or, or whatever else that kind of inspired doing this course, like it's inspired creating this course. You got any kind of good stories around jobs that you've done? Yeah, well, what happened was we, we moved back from New York and I sort of reconnected with Rang then and we couldn't buy a house because we couldn't get a mortgage because we've been overseas for so long. So we rented yet again, me and Daryl and the kids. And that's when we sort of buddied up with Rang again and started hanging out a bit more on I didn't have much work at the time, so I started to pimp my own rental, which was really the biggest rental pimp we did, wasn't it? And that's where yeah. it all began. So we started an Instagram account purely for our own amusement, really, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah. It just started off as a laugh, really, didn't it? It, it did start off as a laugh, and it was like, I don't even know whether... Did you think of the name then, your now, rental? Did I, I think I thought you, of it. You thought that, yeah. But you did the logo. I did the logo, yeah. So it, it started with that, Matt. It was like my own rental house. And it's come from the fact that I've rented for so long. And I'm, I'm now only just a homeowner at the age of 45, which is crazy. And that the idea for the actual course was, I think, I think lockdown. You know, I spoke to someone that was a marketing expert and she just actually said, why have you not made this into a course? Why are you just doing it as an Instagram account? And I thought, why haven't we made it into a course? Mm. And that's what we're doing. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah good people. idea. Everyone's yeah. stuck at home. You know, people, I, everybody wants to do their houses. There must be restrictions, right? I mean, you can only go so, so far with a rental, right? In terms well, of what you can do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a whole section on different types of rentals and what you can and can't do. And there's a section of examples, like case studies of what you could do with rentals. And there's even a, an estate agent I'm interviewing who is sort of shedding the light from the other side on what it's like to be an agent and what the landlords all think about this. So there's lots of information like that. Which Rang didn't know about yet, did you? Because no, because <laughs> he's not writing it. <laughs> no, in the dark. But what you know, to give you an example as well, like I don't want to. Interestingly enough, I've had a bit of feedback on Instagram, and I've heard this a few times from people saying, "Why would I buy your course when I could just find this for free on the internet? I could just look it up." Which is true. You could, if you want to spend hours and hours and hours looking up each different subject, you could. But 
what's different about this is it's all in one place. So I'm trying not to share too much because then it made me really aware of like sharing everything before the people that have bought it can see it. But one of the things that Rang and I did together in the first house, which I feel like this is a subject that's really close to my heart, is it's a section called Embrace the Ugly and the Unwanted. And it's, it's how people can't get their heads around it. Like, you know, if you think of a really ugly bathroom, right, or a really ugly kitchen, all they want to do is rip it out. But there's different ways of looking at it. You know, you can embrace the embrace, ugliness and yeah. make it beautiful, which is what Rang did in our, our last house in that bathroom, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, just by changing colours. Just by colors. changing the colours and adding loads of plants. Plants and things like that, yeah. And it just brought an ugly bathroom up to date, yeah, basically. Yeah, it, it did, so, yeah. yeah. And everyone loves that bathroom. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It went off well. But it was ugly as sin before I, wasn't it? <laughs> Is that what you thought when you went to my bathroom? No, I was like, ah, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Did the same to the kitchen, though. We went quite far. Like, Matt, in yeah. answer to your question, you can go as far as you want. If a landlord agrees and you want to spend the money, which I would, you know, go for it. Obviously, you need to get permission. Yeah, because most landlords, they would like the house to be kept up together in a style. Yeah. Not go wild or anything like that, so they got to no. repaint it, but... A lot of stuff, if you paint a wall, you can always paint it back to the original colour it was anyway. Do you know what I mean? So it's not black well, you can you can a, a lot of coats yeah how many coats <laughs> three yeah <laughs> we always argue about coats of paint i like to do two because i'm a corner cutter rangs a prepper i like to do three <laughs> good i mean look you're, you're um just on your comment about you can do it free you know you can get stuff free off youtube i mean the thing is actually with anything now you, it's not that i mean with absolutely anything you can go onto youtube and learn how to do it but you're not usually getting the best information, the best expertise, the best knowledge. So, you know, I think the, you know, that's, that's the same in any industry with anything, you can get free shit everywhere now. Right. But if you're coming from, you know, a background of where you've been doing this, then you're going to be able to convey some, some value and some information that people just wouldn't get unless they paid for it, which is, which I think is what it's about. So that's, that's important. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, which I now I want to talk about a little bit is, you know, it's about you guys, right? And, you know, maybe we should have started with this, but I think it's good. Yeah. We've got pimp, pimp Your Rental. Well, you know, people can look at that course. But actually, it's about you and Rang, and you guys are in it's, it's, it's Bristol. I mean, Rang absolutely sounds like it's from Bristol. M sounds a bit posh for Bristol, I think. I'm not sure. Is she from yeah. Bristol? There's, I'm what, the let's, no, I mean, well, let's have a bit of history. Let, let, what's a bit of history of you two? Where, you know, how far does it go back? How do you know each other without oh. damaging the pimp your rental brand? Uh, what you know, what what are Rang and M all about? So damaging the pimp your rental brand, which the logo <laughs> is in graffiti writing. So I don't even know if we thought very cleverly about the brand or not. Like, what are we? We we're confused, aren't we? Really about what the brand is. But when did we meet? How many years ago? Then we kind of give away how old we are. Twenty Four. odd days ago, so that no, twenty odd years ago. So, yeah, it's got to be some 24 like years ago. 24 years, yeah. We met at a party. Back, quite back in the around. 90s. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Now I meet people that I said when you're born, like someone that comes to work or something, they're born in like 2001. Uh, it's, it's a bit weird how we met as well, because you were going out with a friend of mine. He brought you to Bristol. You, you were... I was with a girl. You two started chatting, find out that, she her dad, dad bought, bought a house off, off, your off dad. our mum and dad. That is Kent, very random. That was the well, first conversation the I had. The bakery. The bakery in Kentis Beer. Yeah. Rang's My girlfriend's dad, dad bought that owned off, it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in a completely different part of the yeah. world. Well, well, that's also like a whole world away, isn't it? Because yeah. that was when we were very young. Yeah. And I was at university. Rang didn't go to university. But I was there. <laughs> You did actually, you did then, didn't you? Yeah. You spent was, a lot of was, time at my I was, university. I was a student. Yeah. A weekend student. Yeah, a weekend student. Yeah. So we met a really long time ago and our lives were really different then. I don't even know what you did then. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> were you a plumber? I can't remember those years. You had a job, didn't you? I did have a job, yes. Um, I was plumbing then, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was a plumber then. Yeah, so we met a really long time ago and then... We actually lived together as well, two couples. Yeah. When we were very young. That was crazy. That was mad. Isn't Gloss, that mental? Gloss Road. That we lived together. And then it all. You went back to Australia. I went back to Australia. Mm. And then Rang and I didn't really keep in touch because Zoe and him broke up. This is so 
going deeper than we need to be. <laughs> yeah. Zoe and him broke up and Zoe and I stayed friends. So that's, you just sort of pick a side, don't you? And I didn't pick your side. So you guys go back a long way, 25 years. And Em, you obviously, I mean, that was right back in the, th you're, that was back in the thick of the dance scene, right? I mean, you were a, you were a, were you DJing back then? You were a DJ for quite a long time, right? When did you, when, when did you decide to stop being a DJ? Um, I, I, I have a pinnacle moment when I started deciding to stop being a DJ. No, it, I was actually in the Greenwood Hotel in Sydney playing a recovery gig when I was 30. Because you were looking at a crowd of people who'd been out all night and you just thought, I really don't want to be looking at these people in the morning. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think what happened was, you know, the starting of my DJ career, which is, I never really talk about it to anyone. When I'm on shoots, design clients, I don't really tell people I was a DJ. It's so disconnected. But um, yeah, when I first started, everybody wanted to get on the guest list. You did. Everyone did. Josh did. Brownie did. Everyone was there. After about 10 years later, I was sort of like begging people to take the guest list spots. <laughs> I thought, this just feels wrong now. Like, what am I doing? And I stopped. And I already had a degree in media art, so I already sort of also had a bit, a bit of a different creative channel of work, you know, advertising and project management and working with photo, photo shoots and stuff. So then it just naturally progressed into interior styling and design. Cool. And you had, I mean, look, I'm, I'm your brother, so, I, you know, obviously I'm going to be like, promote you in a certain way but you did have a good DJing career for a while there you were playing with I remember going seeing you playing with DJ rap back in in Cambridge in about 90 in early 90s no in 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 uh Milwaukee's in Rushton you had a good you had a pretty solid career in terms of supporting yeah. other DJs and then residencies in Sydney right so but there's a big I think there's a big gap right between being a DJ that's earning a massive amount of salary and a yeah. DJ that's got a club residency and is on the yeah. circuit a bit. It's a, as a career decision back then, it's a, not an easy one to make. It's not, but what's interesting is when this sort of lockdown happened, the first lockdown, and I started doing loads of like home makeovers again, because I had nothing else to do like everybody else. And, you know, I didn't even see Rang then, we couldn't see each other. I just did it at home. I did this like lockdown revamp thing. Something interesting happened. I became a released artist in July this year. And it was a tune that I'd written 20 years ago in Bristol with a DJ and it was listed for sale for £1.79 so I did finally make it <laughs> in the end <laughs> yeah. we're, 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 we, we, um, I gave that up for this <laughs> £1.70 a career worth £1.79 that's not bad I, think, I, think probably, I don't know I don't think I'm, I don't even think I'm listed on the track for the royalties or anything oh. it was a drum and bass uh, track was it it was a drum and bass track yeah yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, funnily enough, I was talking to someone else recently, a musician, he was saying how, you know, the rewards are terrible now for musicians. However, the longevity of the rewards coming back is a lot longer because everything just goes out there digitally. And, you know, in 10 years, you might be like, hey, there's a tune I wrote and it's, you know, suddenly I'm getting paid something. So, yeah, the industry is very different. But I miss it sometimes. I, it's right. I did DJ at my husband's 40th. It rang, like, to point out there was a few clangers in there. But actually well i was i was obviously there you were okay you were terrible on the <laughs> uh, no, hang on, let me let me finish the sentence you were terrible when you were trying to use the the modern gear the moment you got onto a set of 1200s with vinyl you were bang on so yeah. you know it's yeah. uh yeah you had to go old school Abby, are you? Anyway. i'm not very tech savvy what are you oh for it. Are you? Yeah. i did think that when we started doing this like when we started the pimp your rental thing you know obviously now it's the course and I think that we've got some really good things happening we've got like a lot of partnerships with you know paint and different companies so I think it's going to be really something but at the time when we started it and we were doing all these episodes on Instagram I kept thinking how can we like incorporate some music because Rang's got a massive background in music as well there's always music's always a big thing of whatever we do when we're in the van yeah you know what's your what's your background in music Rang I don't know that like you were you I know obviously I, we know each other a little bit but I don't I didn't know you you know that well in the past have you been involved in music graffiti anything oh, else all the bristol yeah. type stuff yeah uh, back in the day um well graffiti came out when i was in school and everything like that so yeah tried tried doing that so um went to the mic when uh the rave scene came about jumped up on the mic and oh you're an mc yeah i was a little bit but didn't really like it but was involved in the rave scene quite a bit because we was doing free parties 
Um, worked at Lakota for quite a while, um, doing sound engineering and everything like that. So yeah, I was, I was always in the background of the music. Not up front. So is that kind of is that kind of how it works now with Pimp Your Rental? Is that like yeah. the dynamic? Yeah. I'm always in the background. And support <laughs> holds everybody up. You're supporting act. You do hold us up though. You do hold me up. I'm sure I think his shoulders are. <laughs> Many of people I've got to carry. Yeah, but if I if you didn't have me on the other side oh, of it, what would you do on your own? Nothing. You wouldn't have the just getting drunk. Bands, would you? Eating pies. <laughs> <laughs> We do, I think the, the thing that's changed a bit, because we, we were talking about this the other day as well, we, obviously the course is a bit more structured, like there's a lot of information in there. There are videos and stuff. So I think they'll, you know, we're still doing that, but we don't have the freedom. Before a lot of it, when it was just on the Instagram stories, a lot of it was in the van and doing stuff and going to B&Q. And Shopping, wasn't it? Uh, well, you were always smoking, R&B. smoking and having cups of tea most of the time. But that doesn't really happen now because we can't really go anywhere. There's nowhere to go. No, so really. now we just argue about the tea and the smoking. Yeah. Don't we? <laughs> That's still there. Yeah. But yeah, it'd be nice to sort of go out. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> You're, something I should have asked at the beginning, actually, um, your background now, forgetting that you, there's the DJ part, but beyond that, what, like just maybe, do you want to share what you actually do? Because it really supports actually this pimp your rental oh, sure. idea. Well, yeah. I mean, you've been doing it since. It's been 15 years right now. So, yeah, do you want to just give a little bit of insight into that? The Style Clinic. So I started, I launched my first styling business in Sydney when I was still in Sydney. And that's when I became a stylist. I was doing just photo shoots and magazine stuff. And that wasn't really busy enough. So I actually, not interned, I I trained with an interior designer in Sydney for four years. And then I, I became a designer as well. I studied at the Sydney College of Design. And I... I now am an interior designer and stylist. I mean, I guess I'd, I'd like to, I am a leading interior designer, stylist, sorry, not designer, because um, I work for quite a lot of the big brands in America and England. As the, my design company is a lot younger, really. I sort of, I did a few houses in Australia, a few in America, but the actual studio, Emily Ricard Design, which rang sort of dips in and out of as well. You're sort of part of everything, aren't you really? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's been in Bristol for the last three years. And it's just, it, it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. There's so much Excellent. going on. Yeah, there is. There is. It's good. And it's sort of crossing over a bit now, which is interesting. Now we're growing as a business. I've got two assistants and Rang, you know, does lots of different bits with me and other, other projects. We can now be a bit more creative and just sort of teaching ourselves things a bit, yeah. aren't we? No, a little bit. Like every day's a learning day. Every day's a learning day. So Pimp Your Rental is a bit of an offshoot of all that work, really, right? I mean, it's, it's a... Yeah. It's an offshoot yeah. of the like like baby, really. It's an actual... <laughs> <laughs> an accidental baby <laughs> it's maybe this is a good this is maybe this is a great segue to the end like this is so yeah but pimp your rental is an i mean it could be the log line here the the accidental baby of of whatever your website is emilyrickard.com it sounds awful but yeah maybe yeah, it's a baby of emily rickard emily rickard stylist and pimp your rental yeah. but then where do you come into it's still just in the background oh, it's like the immaculate conception yeah i just saw it forever it went there <laughs> It just pops up now and again. There's a tenor. <laughs> There's some sweets, kid. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people? So if people want to sign up, <laughs> if they want to, <laughs> so if people want to uh, learn more, if they want to pimp their rental by learning to <laughs> learning the pimp your rental course, do you want to just leave some? I will put them in the podcast notes. But do you want to just tell people where to go, where to learn more? Go on, you well, don't, don't be in the background, man. You say it. Well, Where can they buy the, buy the course? Well, go on to our, on to, uh, Instagram. Um, all the links are in there and everything. So, it, uh, it, Pimp Your Rental on Instagram. What's the, what's the website, though? Uh, PimpYourRental.com. Yes. It's cool. Awesome, guys. Have a go on I'll, that. And, uh, happy days. I love it. It's great. Immaculate conception. <laughs> Babies. <laughs> pimping rentals. Um, yeah. I think you've sold. It's brilliant. We haven't stopped yet. Have you signed up? I will still have a look at it. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, re- I'm not rent. I'm on the Instagram account, but I'm not renting. So there's nothing to pimp out here. So, yeah. It's not just for renters. Yeah, it's not just for renters. It's for homeowners. On a budget. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, it's been good to chat. And you should, uh, it's, it's, it's late Saturday evening here. So I'm going to. I'm going to have a glass of wine and watch some rugby and uh, yeah, cheers and all the best, best of luck with it. I shall send it out and hopefully 
perhaps some people will pimp their rentals through the Pimp Your Rental course. Yes, excellent. Thank you, Thank you very much. Awesome. Bye. Good to Good chat, night. guys. Nice one. So let them look at you rough. We're doing... We're doing Why a quick... straight on? Yeah, straight up. We're going on a quick detour. Um, because this is where I grew up. I'm going to have a quick look at my school. For people that know about me before, you know, Brooklyn and, Brooklyn and Bristol, I spent some years in North Devon growing up and going to school, riding horses. Getting up to Miss Devon, G. Milan, Paris, New York, isn't it? Devon, Milan, Paris, New York. <laughs> Yeah, Emily Rickard, <coughs> Devon, Milan. I don't know where that came from. Paris, New York. I'm farted. It's the smell of the country. We're in the countryside. In our in our Land Rover. Range. This is. But the thing is, it's still a Land Rover. It's Range Rover. It's a Range Rover, but the brand is Land Rover, so we can say Land Rover if we want to. If I want to say Land Rover, I'll say Land Rover. Well, Land Rover. Let's get someone to. Uh... To our Muhammad Ali and Sonny Barner, the president of Hell's Angels. This is 1095.